set up when you put those through, it's going to make a spider trap. That's one. Star Wars battle happening underneath the ice. All right, now this is the thinnest ice that I've gone on. What's going on guys? This is Noah with Northern Scavenger and welcome to this week's video. Finally in Nova Scotia, the weather has been below freezing for the last week. There's snow on the ground and I'm pretty sure the lakes are frozen. So we're packing all the activities to head out to the eastern shore for a weekend of hot tenting in Dave's canvas tent. So we're going to find somewhere to park around here. Maybe I'll go to the end and turn around I would think. Sure, yeah. Jerry? Yeah, yeah, Alright, we got Dave coming down the mountain here. We've reached the first river crossing. Jerry's eager. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. You call now, you hook up. We've been walking for a few hours and I'm having some serious issues with my sled. It's very top heavy and I don't have a wrap for it. So it's constantly falling over and tipping and all my stuff's falling out. So I'm behind the rest of the guys now, but I think we're getting to the lake soon. I had to do like four total resets. No. Yeah. The sled just kept rolling, eh? Yeah. It, it took four resets to realize the fundamental flaw in my setup. She looks good now, though. The preferred word for winter travel, we call these pulks. P-U-L-K. I don't know why. It's just it's probably the reason. Somebody comment on that. Whatever. Trying to get all your things on the sled can be problematic, especially when you have all these loose items. So there's a thing called a tank. And a tank is essentially this bag. It's like a giant hockey bag. And it's a big wrap for everything that goes in it. Things you want during the day, like more layers, your lunch, water, all go in the front. You can just undo one little buckle, reach in there, grab your mitts or whatever you need for the day, and that goes on the front. And then you try to spread the weight out the best you can. The harness system is kind of like a three-point harness, so it gives you options to, to pull it, get some ventilation in your back if you start sweating like this. So that's two points on your shoulders, and then full harness like this. And with the waist belt on, it's really nice because the poles are crossed, and that's there if you're going down a hill, so the sled doesn't run you over. And then when it's crossed, you can really use your hips to maneuver which way the tent's going. And that's really helpful too when you got to navigate tight spaces in the bush. A lot of thought goes into these things. We're walking around trying to find a campsite for ourselves. If you're familiar with the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, there is relatively like no flat ground. So we're trying to find a cranberry bog and we're just walking through the islands now. Found a couple spots that might work. It's 
So for the ideal canvas tent site, it's a rather complicated ordeal. So you have to remember that the, the tent is here and the door is at the front of it and the stove pipe goes off of the left side of the tent. So you want to make sure that is downstream, downwind from the prevailing winds or wherever it's coming from. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you want a spectacular view out the front door, obviously. You don't want to be staring into the trees if you don't have to. And then after that, it's the resources that you're kind of looking for. So standing dead spruce. So you're looking for spruce trees? And what is what we want is a standing dead spruce tree. They're nice and shiny with the porcupine teeth around them. If you watch the Labrador series, you'd know this because Chris told you. And then we want standing living spruce trees as well because we need the poles for the stove pipes and for floats for the stove and wood racks and all kinds of things. And then we want the boughs because it's actually the floor of the tent because there is no floor in the tent. We found this little spot, there's a little bit of snow so we won't be slipping and sliding in the tent and uh, places to guy out the sides of the tent. We're gonna make it do. And we have lots of access to explore around here. It's gonna be fun. All the skirts out. Yep, that's good. Yep. As this black skirt around the outside of the tent, it helps keep the tent from blowing away, which is very important. And also like seals it so there's no like breezes or anything coming in from underneath. And once you move the snow, snow is super light and fluffy because it's cold but when you pick it up and you move it the crystals actually change they'll compact so it's kind of like if you pull a sled over a trail and then you try to walk on it it's really soft at first but if you leave it for a couple hours and then you walk on it it's nice and hard It all seems pretty secure here, Dave. There's a really big dead one over there. You kind of see it. We had a suite with four people. One guy setting up a tent. One guy sawing wood. Often I'm doing this by myself. It's a lot easier when you have a crew of four. That stuff out there. That's black ice, I think. Oh, we got some over there too. We got some right over there. Let's go check this out. There's all these black ice sections that would have been open water like 48 hours ago. And we've been having cold conditions recently. So all these black sections that you see up the front, those are all potentially skatable. And here's the first one. Let's see if we can see how deep it is. I think this is at least two inches of ice, which is plenty for skating. And there's a lot of it around here. Let's see how she skates.
Oh my god. This is it. This is the ice. This is it. This is it. Cracks like this, you can really tell. It's like the thinnest you can walk on. I don't know. That's one of those things, like, it'd be great to actually try in a controlled environment. Yeah, no, it's true. It is true. Oh my god. That crack went right underneath me. That was freaky. And oh my God, it is beautiful out here. The conditions are perfect. The ice is black ice and it's everywhere. Do you mind doing me a favor? What's that? If you're out there, just those cheese buns. Throw that bag in here. If you don't mind. And Dave's out here on the, the back stove. See that taco surprise? Terminate. I think so. I'm pretty sure. After the whole uh, invasion of the Thomas River. Right. They don't mark it in the United States anymore. Right. So well, we're not doing that because all the bad crap. Well, let's say we can have some bacon here soon. How'd you sleep last night? I slept pretty good. You want to see where I slept? Thought it would be a bit tight in the hot tent before. And I slept under there. And the tarp, just enough to keep the, you can see there's a fair bit of um, condensation, just enough to keep that off in the window. I uh, had a bivy bag, which is nice, and a really thick uh, air mattress. Um, and a minus, I think I have a minus nine bag. That cheese to have a nice melt on it. Oh, nice, like a broil? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna ship out of here. 
So the same way we came in. And uh, I got stuff I gotta do tomorrow. I'm going skiing. I don't really want to go, but say la vie, I guess. Awesome Everybody? time, guys. That was fun. Yeah. Have fun out there. Yeah. Stay safe. All right. See you, Jerry. Stay safe. See you, guys. Yeah. So Brad and Kyle are heading off in one direction. And Dave, what are we up to? Uh, we're strapping up. We're going to head out into the big lake, go hunting for virgin black ice. Over the right side of this island, Just around where we came from. As you can see the water moving here. And maybe we try the uh, the right side. In these narrow sections, there's a uh, moving current. And because of that, the ice isn't as thick there. So we try and get to the main section of the lake. We need to pass one of these narrow sections. So we're just being very cautious and testing the ice as we go. Dave's up ahead. What's the scoop? It looks pretty similar. Like I was getting through in four or five. Okay. Yeah. And how much extra play do we have out there? How much more room is there to skate? Yeah. The whole lake's frozen over. So it's just this bay that's just like this? Like. I don't know. It's impossible to tell. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, there's open water right there. Oh, are we able to crawl along the shoreline to your right? Yeah. Probably not good for my skates. <laughs> this feels like lining a river. So that's the prize out there. That's what we think might be the perfect black ice. It's just black, it's black ice, and it's difficult to gauge how thick it is. It's psychologically quite terrifying. Beautiful at the same time. Something else. This is it! This is it! All right guys, we are gonna try the full connection. This shore to that shore, I think if I'm going at full speed, I have a better chance of not going through two. So we're gonna do the full send to the opposite shoreline. Let's go! <sighs> oh my god, what a rush. <laughs> I'm tired. 
and also terrified too. So my heart is pounding. While I was going, I was hearing the cracking underneath me. I don't know if it picked up in the audio, but every time I, I pushed off, I heard <sighs> I might do another one. I did some scouting out there and it does get a little thinner, but I feel safe in a, in a new zone out there. So we're gonna go for a lap, see how it goes. Worst case, I do go in. All right, now this is the thinnest ice that I've gone on. It's almost like I'm just waiting to fall in. Really get your heart pumping. Whew. Really experimenting here. I would have to think that these are some very rare conditions and we're very lucky to be able to experience this this year. The sound of your skates is like, it's crazy. I know we'll have some people that say what we're doing is extremely dangerous and we could die, but we're not just out here cowboying around. We are taking the precautions with checking the ice and also we are not on moving water. So if we do fall through the ice, it's going to be very uncomfortable, but in my backpack, we have a spare set of clothes and we also have the canvas tent not too far back with wood. So, we'll get cold, but there's not gonna be any long-term consequences. You always gotta assess your risk before getting on the ice and weighing what's the worst case scenario, but you always wanna have a spare pair of clothes and an exit plan if you were to fall through the ice. Last night there were some very eerie cracks. One of them went right underneath the canvas tent and it was loud enough that it woke me up. Ice is dynamic, it does move, it does shift. There's a lot of pressure there. That's why there's cracks. We skated all day yesterday, but my body's fine. I'm ready for another round. The lighting's very soft this morning. The storm's on its way, but hopefully that sun stays true for the next few hours. We're just heading to the spot now. Oh, buddy. Yeah, it seems more solid out here now. Like, the bubbles are, are thicker. As I skate close to shore, there's a wake underneath the ice and the ice is breaking on the rocks. Oh. Okay, watch out for rocks, Noah. We've come to a bay and it looks like there's more black ice to explore on the other side of this portage here. I am just wearing my skates, which is probably not the best for them. 
but I'm not taking them off for this. Forgot my sunglasses, guys. That's why I've been squinting like a madman. Can't see with all my glasses. Here's some ice that was thawed and broke off. And then the freeze throws it all back together into this double layer combo. So at this spot here, two big ice sheets merged. There's open water here and there's a big line. It's quite obvious where it is, but we want to get to the other side. So we need to figure out a safe way to do so. We're on the other side, boys. What do you think of those sounds? It's like a Star Wars movie. The Star Wars battle happening underneath the ice. It's crazy, and then the, the sounds come, it's like you can hear them coming. And then for me, it's like this psychological battle. Stay calm. That is a high crunch ratio. High crunch ratio right now. <laughs> Gotta be from the sun. Man, I feel like some of these slabs are actually starting to move apart a bit. Cause I tripped over a, like a ledge Did of you? black ice, yeah. There is a spot not very far back. You were going, I couldn't see the crack, but I could see the water filling it up behind you as you were going. No. I, lo I looked at it, I skated right over and touched it. Yeah, water. It's one of those things, it's like the best is right on the line of like, uh, how many crunches is too many crunches? What's the crunch ratio to fall through black ice? We don't know yet. It's gonna, when you put that through, it's gonna make a spider track. Oh, that's one. That's one. Can you measure it if like stick it in? Like based on the plume, I would say about an inch. It just seems like softer ice. Like I was, that blow through is pretty easy, but like it's still in range. I'm gonna wrap everything in my coat. 
Like a little donair. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing.